Welcome to the lecture covering the content from chapter 23 of Eric Foner's Give Me Liberty, Volume 2. And in this lecture, we're going to be looking at the decade or so following the end of the Second World War, as America ramps up into a Cold War, a very different kind of war, an arms race between the United States and its main adversary, the Soviet Union. But really, it becomes an ideological battle of uh, democracy versus communism. Now, we're going to see that, you know, Foner continues his theme of examining how Americans have defined freedom, what it means to be free in America, and the boundaries of that freedom, who has access to it. So what does it mean to be an American? Uh, who has access to being an American? What rights and freedoms are bestowed on Americans? And do all Americans have access to the same rights and freedoms? And we're going to see that this Cold War and this anti-communist movement in America really becomes another defining factor of what it means to be an American, defining American identity against the other, right? To be an American is to be pro-democracy and to be anti-communist. And to be a communist means you are anti-American. So this is part of shaping the meaning of freedom. But the other continuing trend that we see in American history during this period is that the United States still had not fully grappled with uh, race inequality. The racial inequality that e existed in this country really uh, in perpetuity from the beginning of its uh, of, of colonization all the way up until now in the 1940s and 1950s, this period that we're looking at. And and. World War One and World War Two had both shed lights, shed light on on America's hypocrisy when it came to the idea of freedom and democracy. Woodrow Wilson's speech on making the world safe for democracy in World War One, you know, discussed America's role as being like the arbiter of the world to go out and and to ensure that all people have access to self determination and to uh, democratic participation. And yet, here in the United States, that same access to self-determination and democratic participation was not being insured to African Americans, a large segment of the American population, Americans by birth, right? And then in World War II, a similar thing happens where a light again is, is shined on American hypocrisy. Franklin Roosevelt gives this speech about the four freedoms uh, that America should fight for to, to protect these four freedoms and extend these four freedoms to all parts of the globe, right? The freedom of speech and expression, the freedom of every person to worship in his own way, his or her own way, uh, the freedom from want and the freedom from fear. And yet, these freedoms were not being guaranteed to African Americans at this same time. Right? And so the United States it has these ideas that it touts, and yet it is not, it's not putting action where its words are, right? To, to guarantee these provisions for African Americans. And so we're going to see that as the United States government continues to shape the idea of what it means to be an American against this idea of what it means to be un-American, what it means to be communist, as opposed to pro-democracy, they still haven't dealt with this racial inequality that has permeated American society. And so we're heading into the ramping up of the civil rights movement, and the United States still is not dealing with this issue. Foner talks about this freedom train tour that takes place in 1947 to celebrate and commemorate the 160th anniversary of the ratification of the, um, the U.S. Constitution. And yet the American Heritage Foundation that is tasked with the responsibility of choosing which documents, which historical documents that have shaped the United States are going to be included on this freedom train, that foundation deliberately chooses to exclude certain documents. And this is important to look at. Anytime you examine uh, the words or the actions of people in the past, it's important to ask questions of what they chose to include and what they cho chose to exclude or omit, 
right? Again, whether it is uh, an action, what did they do? What did they choose not to do? Or words, what did they say and what did they choose not to say? So the American Heritage Foundation deliberately decided to leave out the 14th and 15th Amendments to the Constitution. Key, important, significant, historical amendments to the Constitution that were part of the Reconstruction process and part of extending American freedom to all Americans regardless of race. Now, they chose to include the Emancipation Proclamation and the 13th Amendment but exclude the 14th and 15th Amendment. Why? Right? So we should ask, why would they choose to include the 13th Amendment and the Emancipation Proclamation, but not the 14th and 15th Amendment? Again, it goes back to the hypocrisy that was becoming more and more glaring in American society and American politics. So if you're going to celebrate the American Constitution, It makes sense that you would celebrate and commemorate those policies and those values that were upheld, right? So the Emancipation Proclamation liberating African Americans from slavery uh, in much of the country, and then the um, 13th Amendment, which abolished slavery forever in the United States, those are huge and, and, and monumentally important. Uh, policy changes in the United States, right? Now, it can be argued that through sharecropping uh, and through the lack of economic mobility um, and through uh, Jim Crow laws or black codes, there was a um, perpetual state of second-class citizenship or even forced labor to a degree with these labor contracts that were required um, of African Americans. It can be argued that slavery continued to exist, but under a different name and under slightly different conditions, right? But certainly the institution of slavery as it had existed from the um, 1600s up until 1865 was no more, and it had not returned in that, uh, in that state, right. In that, in that manner, that same brutal institution. So America could tout the 13th amendment and the emancipation emancipation proclamation as, uh, monumental events in American history promises that it had made the American people and that it had kept. And yet the 14th amendment that extended citizenship and, and equality before the law to all Americans, regardless of race, Uh, And the 15th Amendment that promised uh, the right to vote and political participation to all Americans, well, all men at that time, uh, regardless of race, two very important constitutional amendments that were rolled out as part of Reconstruction and and as part of America in expanding the boundaries of freedom to include all Americans, including African Americans who were born here in this country. those amendments were left out from the freedom train. Why? Because those were policies, those were promises that had not been kept, that had not been upheld. Because Jim Crow laws and practices in the South had not treated people equally before the law. African Americans were not treated equally after the ratification of the 14th Amendment in 1868. They weren't treated as equal citizens. And after the ratification of the 15th Amendment that granted and guaranteed the right to vote regardless of race, after that ratification in 1870, African Americans were still denied the right to vote through grandfather clauses and through poll taxes and literacy tests and other practices that were implemented to exclude African Americans from the right to vote. And so the 14th and 15th Amendment, as significant and important as they are to American history, had not been fulfilled. And so to include them on the freedom train would, again, uh, shed further light on American hypocrisy, right? And so that just shows us, it gives us an idea of how the United States still was struggling, how white America was still struggling to deal with the thing that was staring them in the face, which is that uh, the things that they were saying, the values and, and ideas that America cherished were not actually being fulfilled in reality. They were not being realized for all Americans. 
And so we're going to get to take a look at uh, these things, these ideas, these concepts in chapter 23 of Phoner's Give Me Liberty, volume two. Now, this lecture will be uh, separated into four different parts, the origins of the Cold War, the Cold War and the idea of freedom, the Truman presidency, and the anti-communist crusade. And each one of these uh, subtopics will have a focus question. Uh, and so with that said and that introduction behind us, let's get started. <laughs> 